Hi, it's Ed Butowski, and I'm here to give you some brighter economic news. Uh, we've had a big change in the month of July. Um, not saying that this is going to continue on, but I wanted to share some of the uh, brighter economic outlook information with you. Um, first thing, you could see a decline in real treasury yields in the month of July. Um, and this is really important because this shows that some of the raising of rates um, have started to take and, and have an impact on inflation. And I'll show you more of that as we go forward here. But you can see the blue line is the 10-year Treasury yield. And that's this is real. So this is after inflation. And you can see the lighter blue line is minus 0.03%. So again, those are very positive signs. And you had a really good month in July. Consumer discretion was up 18.4%. Now, this is different than consumer staples, which is at the very end of this. And consumer discretion are those items that you can live without. Consumer staples are items that you can that you need to have all the time. And so you could also see that even energy was still up 9.7%. So you had really kind of a, an interesting dichotomy because you had energy, which normally does not do very well during consumer discretionary items, uh, did well um, as well as real estate, financials. Everything did well in the month of July, but your consumer discretion was up sizably. Now, they were also down the most during the slowdown in the stock market. So you can take that, you know, with a grain of salt that it was up the most, but uh, something, you know, interesting to look at. Then you have the high yield corporate market and investment grade market. And, and most of you don't really think about the high yield market and the bond market, but that, that plays a huge role in how investing uh, goes uh, throughout the year. And this has been one of the first times in, uh, you know, in recent times that you saw the high yield and investment grade credit spread shrink, meaning that high yield bonds yields came down, meaning the prices went up on high yield versus investment grade. So that means that this, there's a shrinkage between the high yield and investment grade uh, market, which is very, very good, especially for those of you who have senior rate floating notes and business development companies. Uh, this is a really good sign, and this is something I'm looking for, seeing even more of the high yield market yields coming down and prices going higher in the short run. And in the last two weeks, you've seen a decline in the dollar. This is important also for those companies that are exporting, because if their dollar is weaker, that means people can buy more of our items. If our dollar is strong, then you have the complete opposite. So you had a strong dollar. Uh, in fact, the dollar is up 12% year to date, but over the last two weeks, uh, it's down 2%. That's something to watch because a lot of times we want to see a weaker dollar to make our exports look more attractive. Keep that in mind. And the ISM uh, manufacturing suggests an easing, uh, the inflation is starting to ease quite a bit. And you, know, you can read the headline here and, and see that it's come off of its uh, high and uh, it's dropped quite a bit. So that's also really good. Then here is a chart that kind of goes into showing that it's not easy for the Fed to get inflation under control. Uh, and there's lots of different lines here. Uh, you have this dark blue line, uh, and which represents 1999. But this shows the number of months since the first Fed funds rate increase. And you can also see that you know we, we jumped out very, very quickly and have risen rates at a very, very high number. I don't know if it's going to be enough. I still think we need to get another 50 to 60, uh, excuse me, 50 to 75 basis points into the next hike uh, to really set ourselves up uh, to be in a good position to offset inflation. But we also have to worry about when we're, when we're reducing inflation, we're also hurting the economy. And that's something that we have to really be careful about. But uh, this uh, shows that it's really, really difficult for inflation. And PCE is the uh, inflation rate that the government likes to quote. And this is the year over year core number. So this is not the CPI number, uh, but this does show that you know, we're, we're starting to see you know, a little bit of a movement in how inflation is gonna be you know, combated 
But again, if you look at 87, uh, 88, 94, 2004, and so on, it's not easy to get it done properly and, and get it done on a straight line. So I always love talking about the real rates, and this is taking what the government pays, if you put it in a government plan uh, portfolio or, or their funds, subtracting their inflation rate. So Turkey, if you put your money into their um, into their savings account and then you subtract it out inflation, you're minus 65%. Uh, percent. The Czech Republic down 10.5%, Poland down nine. Uh, and you get to the United States and we're down 6.1%. So that means that you know whatever we're paying on the Fed funds rate, you subtract then our inflation rate and you get 6.1%. So that's still not very, very good. And this is one of the reasons why I think we could see a global recession because you have way too many countries that are paying very little for savings accounts and their cost of living is going up really high. That's again a good reason why I wanna see the dollar shrink go down in value so it makes our items look more positive, you know, it looks more attractive, I should say, for other countries uh, to buy. And then this is also interesting. This is a commodity price change over the last year. Uh, so you can obviously see that you know inflation is still a huge concern. You have heating oil up 64%, and I'm sure most of you have seen these numbers. What you haven't seen is that sugar is down 7%, silver's down 11%, and copper's down 16%. Soybeans is only up 7% now. Um, and you have corn up 12 and, and wheat up 10. And these are a lot of items that um, you know, are embedded in most of the goods that we end up buying. You know, a lot of the chips and uh, other foods that we buy at the grocery store you know, are wheat and corn uh, and soybeans. So you, you have to you know, really focus in on commodity prices. Commodity prices are what lead a lot of the inflationary concerns as well as the printing of money, which again, we're going to start to do uh, because of the uh, deficit that we have. And then this, uh, this shows 16 months of negative real wage growth. Uh, and, and this kind of hits to the high, you know, the, the, the core of what I'm trying to say. And that is that we have a real average American earnings are down 3%. And, and this is just, just horrible um, because this means that people are making money, but they're losing to inflation. So it gets 3% harder for everybody to live. And this is just the average American out there who is seeing their prices going higher and their wages not keeping up with it. So you see a 3.02% separation uh, and I don't you know know if it's going to get much better and this again is going to put a lot of pressure on the economy uh, and it's going to start to hurt corporate earnings so I, I just you know really need you to focus in on what inflation is doing and what your wages are and how inflation is eating away at your purchasing power but again there was some brighter economic news and I wanted to share it with you, but I kind of, you know, I'm leaving on a negative note here uh, because I don't think we're completely out of the woods uh, right now. Uh, but we'll see as earnings start to come in for the uh, second quarter and we'll see what the comments are for the third quarter. But right now you're hearing a lot of comments that are not as bad and as dreadful as people thought they were going to be. And that's why you have stock prices rising. So let's hope that continues.